Phil here again from Phil's Place. I'm going to review with you what is a common issue with freeze drying and that is the loss of vacuum. Often you'll see the message on your screen that says uh, inadequate vacuum and it gives you a little bit of a list of things to check. So one of the things it tells you to check to make sure that your valve here is closed. You also want to make sure that your plug to your vacuum pump is actually plugged in and it wouldn't hurt just to come back and make sure that your switch is actually on. Okay, of course it tells you to look at the door sill. Now, when you're doing the door sill, you should have a thin little black line going all the way around the door sill. That is a good sign. So what we're going to do, we're going to come up here to the screen, we're going to hit customize, and we're going to go to test, and we're going to turn on the vacuum pump. Now, what's going to happen to this sill as the vacuum pump increases, that thin little line should get really nice, thick, and heavy, just like this. That is a good seal. Okay, and that's pretty much what they tell you to do. But we're going to go one step further, and I'm going to show you some other troubleshooting tips and hints that you can do to find out what happened to your vacuum. The first thing you need is going to be some soapy water. Now before you perform these tests, the first thing you want to do, you want to protect your freeze dryer and your pump. So we have already removed the tray from inside and we're going to get a couple of towels and we're going to push them back in the corner just to intercept any of the moisture or any of the water that we're going to be using to perform this test. The first test we're going to do is we're going to test the door gasket. Now I put a little piece of paper in here just to simulate a door gasket leak. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum and I have my soapy water and we're going to pour it in front and all the way around the pump. Okay, so as you can see, you can see where the soapy water is being drawn in by the vacuum and that where our leak is. is. Our leak is. One of the chief culprits of leaks I have discovered for your freeze dryer comes from the drain valve. So what we're going to do, we, just for to show you the demonstration, I have some colored water here. We're going to take out the hose, we're going to put it into the water, and watch what happens. Now our valve is actually closed, but it is still drawing up water. If it can draw up water, it will also translate into a vacuum leak. You'll still be able to pull a vacuum but not a vacuum suitable for freeze drying. So this valve is defective. Went down to Home Depot and picked up another valve. The threads to this valve are 3 8 pipe threads. So make sure you get pipe threads, not a compression fitting. And this is just a standard valve from Home Depot. Okay, so I got a couple of wrenches here. And just as review, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Take off the back end piece first. This fitting right here is a three quarter inch fitting. Now you can see where there's some old Teflon tape here. I'm going to take most of that off but it's not necessary to take it all off. It's not going to really interfere with what we're going to be doing here. Okay, we, when you put on the Teflon tape, you want to go clockwise or in the direction of the threads when you put it back on. And two or three wraps is going to be just fine I would suggest not to use any uh, thread paste because like I said I wouldn't want anything to go th through into my freeze dryer. This is my new valve. Now it will open towards the front but I really don't want that because I don't want the valve to be hitting the front so I can be 
slot, uh, turn it around so it will open and close towards the top. Now you don't have to get this uber tight, just nice and snug. Then we got the same thing here. We're gonna clean up all the Teflon tape. And gonna get about about five or six inches of this. It's just gonna be easier to put it on this way rather than trying to wrap it all the way around. And Teflon tape can be a little bit annoying sometimes. When you're putting on the drain valve, you might want to just remember where you want the drain valve, what direction do you want it to go. I want mine going towards the rear. And so when you tighten it up, you want it to end up where you want it. So I want to go towards the rear, so it's just like that. Okay, got my little wire tie. I'm going to put this back into place to keep my valve from moving around. Yes, sometimes it wants to be difficult. I want to make sure I have enough movement. Now actually, so this is actually going up, so what I really should do is give this another little bit of a turn downwards because my valve is going to be up in the off position. So I just want to turn that down towards the back like so. That way it goes exactly where I want it to go. this back into its slide. Okay, I've ran my freeze dryer for a few minutes, so we're going to go back to the test here. We can put that in there. And no leak, so it's not sucking up any more of the liquid. So that was my problem. It's a simple fix, and it's one of those fix, fixes that are more unusual. So I hope you find this helpful, and I hope this will avoid some of your frustrations in the future. Now this is my old ball valve. This side is on the drain hose side. You can see that the chrome ball is nice and shiny. But if you turn it over, if you look down inside, you can see that the chrome valve is all pitted, and the uh, entrance to that valve is fairly corroded and that's why I was losing vacuum for my freeze dryer through this valve and that's because of the pH of the water. Uh, the water that comes out of the freeze dryer and most foods on the pH scale is actually toward the acid side and so over the years the uh, acid water, I don't want to call it acid water, but the water coming off the food was towards the, P, uh, the acid side of the pH scale and it was corroding this ball valve over time. Okay, so I have here three samples of water that I've taken from my drain on my freeze dryer. I'm trying to find out why the chrome ball valve uh, that we use for the drains for the freeze dryer 
was so heavily rusted that it caused the vacuum former to leak. So I'm going to be testing these three samples and we're going to be comparing it over here on the pH scale. So basically anywhere about 7 is going to be neutral and anything starting from 6 is going to be an acid. Anything going up towards 8 is going to be an alkaline. So we're going to take the first sample here and we're going to put the sample in the test here and we're going to put this in here and we're going to see where the pH is going to be. So this is going to take just a few minutes to settle down but the initial readings is a 6.4 which is just going to be slightly acid. But I have to let, let this go and do its time, its timing until we get the actual final final reading. So I'm going to go through all these three and record the results. Okay, I performed the pH readings on these three samples. Came up with some interesting stuff. The first one was 6.38 pH, which was turkey. This would just be slightly acidic. And then on um, when I did the rib meat and the cream cheese came up with a 4.74 that's even more acidic and then my last sample was sour cream and tilapia which was 4.79 on the pH scale so basically we're looking down here about medium on the acidity on the pH scale so that's probably why the little chrome ball inside my ball valve for my drain was so heavily corroded because most of the food that we freeze dry is on the acidic side that means any of the water that is drawn out from the food is also going to be acidic and so I would suggest for everyone at least once a year to probably uh, take a look inside their ball valve and see if it is corroded if it is corroded you'll probably need to change it and that's why I had the vacuum leak